Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Snowflake Summit 22, the fourth annual Snowflake Summit. Lisa Martin here with Dave Vellante. We're live in, in Vegas, as I mentioned. We've got a couple of guests here with us. We're going to be unpacking some more great information that has come out of the show news today. Please welcome Chris Child back to theCUBE, Senior Director of Product Management at Snowflake. And Lisa Kramer is here, Head of Embedded Products at LiveRamp. Guys, welcome. Thank you. Hi. Tell us a little bit about LiveRamp what you guys do, what, what your differentiators are, and a little bit about the Snowflake partnership. Sure. Well, LiveRamp makes it safe and easy to connect data. And we're powered by core identity resolution capabilities, which enable our clients to resolve their data and connect it with other data sets. And so we brought these um, identity infrastructure capabilities to Snowflake and built into the native application framework. Um, we focused on two initial products around device resolution, which enables our clients to connect customer data from the digital ecosystem. This powers things like measurement use cases and understanding um, campaign effectiveness and ROI. Um, and the second capability we built into the native application framework is called transcoding. And this enables a translation layer between identifiers so that parties can safely and effectively share data at a person-based view. Chris, talk to us about Snowflake just announced a lot of news this morning. Just announced the new Snowflake native application framework. You alluded to this, Lisa. Talk to us about that. What does it mean for customers? What does it do? Give us all the backstory. Yeah, so we, we had seen a bunch of cases for our customers where they wanted to be able to take application logic and have other people use it. So LiveRamp, as an example of that, they built a bunch of complicated logic to help you figure out who is the same person in different systems. But the problem was always that that application had to run outside of the data cloud. And that required you to take your data outside of Snowflake and trust your data to a third party. And so every time that companies have to go become a vendor, they have to go through a security review and go through a long onerous process to be able to be allowed to process the really sensitive data that these customers have. So with the native applications framework, you can take your application code, all the logic and the data that's needed to build it together, and actually push that through secure data sharing into a customer's account, where it runs and is able to access their data, join it with data from the provider, all without actually having to give that provider access to your core data assets themselves. Is it proper to think of the native application framework as a as a PaaS layer within the data cloud? That's a, a great way to think about it. And so th this is where we've integrated with the marketplace as well. So providers like LiveRamp will be able to publish these applications. They'll run entirely on effectively a PaaS layer that's powered by Snowflake and be able to deliver those to any region, any cloud, any place that Snowflake runs. So <laughs> we get a lot of grief for this term, but we've coined a term called super cloud. Yeah. Okay, and the super cloud is an abstraction layer that hovers above the, the, the hyperscale infrastructure, yep. blah, blah, blah. And you're, Companies like yours build on top of that, so you don't have to worry about the underlying complexities. Yep. And we've said that in order to make that a reality, you have to have a super PaaS. So is that essentially what you're doing? You're building your product on top of that? You're not worrying about, oh, okay, now I'm going to go to Azure, I'm going to go to AWS, or I'm going to go to wherever. Is that a right way to think about it? That's exactly right, and I think, um, Snowflake has really helped us kind of shift the paradigm in how we work with our customers and enabled us to bring our capabilities to where their data lives, right? And, and enabled them to kind of run the analytics and run the identity resolution where their data sits. And so um, that's really exciting. And I think um, specifically with the native application framework, Snowflake delivered on the promise of minimizing data movement, right? The application is installed, you don't have to uh, move your data at all. And so for us, that was a really compelling reason to build into it. Um, and we love when our customers can maintain control of their data. So the difference between what you're doing and as partners and a SaaS is that you're not worrying about all the capabilities there in the data, all the governance and the security components. You're relying on the data cloud for that. Is that right, or or is or is it a SaaS? Yeah, I think there's uh, components like certainly parts of our business still run in the SaaS model, uh -huh. but I think the um, ability to rely on some of the infrastructure that um, that Snowflake provides and 
um, honestly, kind of the connectivity and the verticalized solutions that Snowflake brings to bear with data providers and technology providers that matter most to that vertical um, really enable us to kind of rely on some of that uh, to ensure that we can serve our customers as, th as they want us to. So you're extending your SaaS platform and bringing new capabilities as opposed to building or are you building new apps in the data cloud? This is, I'm sorry to be so pedantic, but I'm trying to understand from yeah. your perspective. Oh yeah, um, so we built new capabilities within the data cloud. It's based on our core identity infrastructure capabilities, but we wanted to build into the native application framework so that data doesn't have to move and we can serve our customers and they can maintain control over their data in their environment. So we built we built new capabilities, but it's all based on our core identity infrastructure. So safe sharing, it reminds me of like, you know, when your procurement says, do we have an MSA? <laughs> yes, okay, go. You know, it's just frictionless <laughs> versus no. Okay, send some paper, go back and forth, and it just takes forever. That's one of the big goals that we see. And, I, and to your point on, is it a pass, is it a SaaS? We honestly think of it as something a little bit different. In a similar way to where at Snowflake, we saw a whole generation of SaaS business models. And as a utility and a consumption-based model, we think of ourselves as different from a SaaS business model. We're now trying to enable application providers like LiveRamp to take the core technology and IP that they've built over many, many years, but deliver it in a completely new, different way that wasn't possible. And so part of this is extending what they're doing and making it a little easier to deploy and not having to go through the MSA process in the same way. But also we, are, we do think that this will allow entirely new capabilities to be brought that wouldn't be possible unless they could be deployed and run inside the data cloud. Is LiveRamp a consumption pricing model or is it a subscription or a combo? We are actually a um, subscription, but with some usage um, uh, capabilities built in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Chris, talk a little bit about the framework that you guys have both discussed. How is it part of the overall Snowflake vision of delivering secure and yep. governed, powerful analytics and data sharing to customers and ecosystem partners and so this, for us, we view this as kind of the next evolution of Snowflake. So, so Snowflake was all built on helping people consolidate their data, bring all your data into one place, and then run all of your different workloads on it. And what we've seen over the years is there are still a lot of different use cases where you need to take your data out of the data cloud in order to do certain different things. So we made a bunch of announcements today around machine learning so that you don't have to take your data out to train models. And native applications is built on the idea of don't bring your data to the applications you need, whether they're machine learning models, whether they're identity resolution, whether they're really even just analytics. Instead, take the application logic and bring that into the data cloud and run it right on your data where it is. And so the big benefit of that is I don't, I don't need copies of my data that are getting out of sync and getting out of date. I don't need to give a copy of my data to anyone else. I get to keep it, I get to govern it, I get to secure it, I know exactly what's going on. But now we can open this up to workloads, not just ones that Snowflake's building, but workloads that partners like LiveRamp or anyone else is building. All those workloads can then run in a single copy of your data in a single secure environment. And when you say in one place, Chris, it's, it's, I, 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 people can get confused by that because it's really not in one place. It's all, it's the global thing that Benoit stressed this morning. And that, right, and so these, once you write a native app once, so the native app that they've written is one piece of code, one application, that now can be deployed by customers in any region or on any cloud that they're running on without any changes at all. So to your point on the pass, that's where it gets very pass-like because they write once to the Snowflake APIs and now it can run literally anywhere the Snowflake runs. But the premise that we've put forth in SuperCloud is that this is a, this is a new era. It's not multi-cloud and it, it, it's, it's consistent with a digital business. Right, you're building a, you've got a digital business and this is a new value layer of a digital business. If, I'm, if I've got capabilities, I want to bring them to the cloud, I want to bring them to, every, every company's a software company, software is eating the world, data is eating software, I mean I could go on and on and on, but it's not like 10 years ago. This is a whole new life cycle that we're just starting. Is that valid? I mean, do you feel that way about LiveRamp? Definitely. Um, I mean, I think it's really exciting to see all of the data connectivity that is happening. 
at the same time, I think the challenges still remain, right? So there are still challenges around being able to resolve your data and being able to connect your data to a person-based view in a privacy-safe way, to be able to partner with others in uh, a data collaboration model, right? And to be able to do all of that without sharing anything um, from a sensitive identifier standpoint or, um, or not having a resolved data set. And so I think you're absolutely right. There's a lot of really cool, awesome innovation happening, but the customer challenges kind of still exist. And so that's why it's, it's, it's exciting to build these applications that can now solve those problems where that data is. It's the cloud benefit, you know, the heavy lifting thing for data. Because you don't have to worry about all that. You can focus on campaign ROI or whatever new innovation that you want to bring out. You know, that's well, and, and think about it from the customer, from the end customer's perspective. They now can come into their, their single environment where they have all their data. They can say, I need to match the identity, and they can pull in LiveRamp with a few clicks. And then they can say, I'm ready to take some actions on this, and they can pull in action tools with just a few more clicks. And they haven't made, in a you know, current marketing stack that you see, there's 20 different tools and you're schlepping data back and forth between each of them, and LiveRamp's just one stop on your journey to get this data out to where I'm actually sending emails or targeting ads. Our vision is that all that happens on one copy of the data. Each of these different tools are grabbing the parts they need, again, in a secure, well-governed, well-controlled way, enriching in ways that they need, taking actions that they need, pulling in other data sets that they need, but the end consumer maintains control over the data and over the process the entire way through. So, one copy of the data. So, you, you, you sometimes might make a copy, right? But you'd oh, make as many copies as you need to, but no more, kind of thing, like mm -hmm. to paraphrase well, Einstein, or is that right? Or? To, there's literally one copy of the data. So, so, one of the nice things with Snowflake, with data sharing and with native applications, there's the data is stored once in one file on disk, and in, in S3, which eventually is a disk somewhere. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, but what can happen is I'm really just granting permission to these different applications to read and write from that single copy of the data. So as soon as, as, soon as a new customer touches my website, that immediately shows up in my data. LiveRamp gets access to that instantly. They enrich it. Before I've even noticed that that new customer signed up, the data's already been enriched, the identity's been matched, and they're already put into a bucket about what campaign I should run against Okay, so the data stays where it is, you bring the ISIL comp compute, but the application, the to, application the, to the data. The application itself, right to the data. And then you take the results, right, and then I can no, read no. them back? You or? bring the next application right to that same copy of the data. So what'll happen is you'll have a view that LiveRamp is accessing and reading and making changes on. LiveRamp is exposing its own view. I have another application reading from the LiveRamp view, exposing its own view, and ultimately someone's taking an action based on that. Uh, okay. But there's right. one copy of the data all the way through. That's the really powerful thing. Okay, so yeah, so you're not moving the data, so you're not dealing with latency problems, but I can, if I'm an Australian and I'm running in US West, it's not a problem. So, right? yes, so there, if you do want to run across different clouds, we will copy the data in that case. We found it's okay, much faster. Okay, great, I thought I was losing my mind. No. But, <laughs> but as, long as, you're, as long as you're staying within a single region, there will be no copies of yeah, the data. Okay, yeah, okay, totally makes sense, yeah. great. Cool. A lot of efficiency there and speed to be able to get the insights. That's what it's all about, being able to, to turn the volume up on the data from a value perspective. Thanks so much, guys, for joining us on the program today, talking about what LiveRamp and Snowflake are doing together and breaking down the Snowflake native application framework. We appreciate your insights and your time, and thanks for joining us. Thank you both thanks for you guys. Us. Thank you. For our guests and Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from Snowflake Summit 22 from Las Vegas. We'll be right back with our next guest.